Hey everybody, I'm Charlotte Cunningham coming to you on winningruns.com from the greatest arena in the world, Diamond W Arena in Alvarado, Texas. We'd like to thank Lisa McCool for letting us use her arena. I'd like to welcome Angie Grand Prix from Canyon, Texas. Angie's going to share with us some helpful hints that she and Bunt Kitchens use to win Oklahoma City, the BFA World Fraternity on Pure Victory Dash. She's going to show us some of the helpful hints that she used to win the BBR finals, win $45,000 last year, and a few saddles along the way. Angie's just now a relatively new person to the futurity industry. She has trained a few future fortunes winner, and we're glad to have her on. She's going to share with us some stuff that Bunt has told her how to do. He's kind of absent today, him and the mayor, because they're raising new champions in Mule Shoe, Texas. Angie, I'd like to thank you for you coming on for winning runs. Thank you, Charlotte. Before I get started on the barrels to tell you some of Bunt's training ideas that he's passed on to me, I want to let you know if I was to come to this arena today and it's open arena, the majority of your people walk in here and they go that way to the right. And to me that's training a horse to run down the fence or, or to duck off. Um, if I was to come to this arena and it's open arena, come in, go left, unless you have a left-handed horse. Uh, you just want to you want to think ahead of your horses at all times, so come in and go left if you were to ride in this arena on a right-handed barrel horse. Bunt works his horses. Um, he works his horses with two hands on the reins. He keeps his hands real low. Definitely, he doesn't get his hand down his reins. They stay basically in the middle. He thinks that, he, he always tells me it's an eight-foot pocket. Uh, he goes pretty straight at the first barrel. He never stops. I'm going to stop right here and talk just a little bit about it. He never stops his horses, but this is about the pocket that he wants you to have. And I guess if I got off and measured it, it would be about eight foot. When he's slow working his horses or whenever I'm slow working them, like I said, he works with, with two hands. Uh, he doesn't do much of a big pocket. He doesn't really get their nose. He, he just lets the horse be real natural. And the horse in the end is going to be faster when they get to work their way and, and do what's most natural to them. But all, he tells me that if a horse is, you can always teach them to go wider. So that's why he starts with a pretty narrow pocket. He said one, once they start making a big pocket, it's really hard to, to get them to go closer to that barrel without learning how to drop into the barrel. He does, in my opinion, about just as much steering with the outside rein as he does with the inside rein. It, and that's one of the bridges that we've had to learn how to gap. I'll, it'll, I'll show you how to try. Sometimes whenever I finish the third barrel, I'll over finish it and go towards the fence. Sometimes I just kind of go back towards the middle. This horse, she's like I said, she's usually pretty frisky. She's usually pretty, uh, in my opinion, what I call tail tucky. She's been really good today. I can't wait to come run her here at a barrel race at Alvarado. She seems to like this pin. Look at this giant little rocket. That man's raised some great ones. Hey everybody, welcome to Winning Tips. We're starting something new for 2009. We're letting some new and upcoming trainers and professionals come on, show their stuff, so you can see some of their new stuff and see if you'd like to see any more extra long videos of them. So we're just kind of testing the waters here. Today we have Laura Schumann on here. She's a trainer for 25 years. Her motto is to help every person achieve their goals as easily as they can. She stays close to home because of the multitude of horses that she has not able to go and travel and you know do the rodeo scene like most of professional right, trainers. Right, exactly. Um, <clears throat> we we're glad you came on. Laura's going to talk about a couple of things. She's going to talk about hand positioning, body control, and the point of the turn today. Laura, we're glad you're here. Thank, Thank you, you for coming on. Thank you. Laura, you have a really good theory 
on hand positioning. Mm -hmm. And you have a demonstration that I have never done this, so <laughs> y'all folks at home, if I mess up, you know, just forgive me. Laura, if I mess up, forgive me. Okay, okay. I will. Tell me what you mean, some of the things that we're going to talk about in your mm -hmm. hand positioning. So tell me some of the stuff that, you know, that you think is important in hand positioning. Well, the main thing that I see with my customers, my clients' horses, and when I go to the clinics, is girls that don't know how to hold their hands up. Mm -hmm. um, I see a constant uh, amount of pressure, people pulling downward in a downward action, mm -hmm. um, expecting to be able to hold a horse's shoulder up which it's physically impossible. Um, you take these girls that are 100 pound riders and I don't care if you're a 100 pound rider or you're a 200 pound rider, you, you're, you're dealing with a 1200 pound horse. Right. So what the, you know, I've come to try to show these girls is uh, seeing is believing. Absolutely. And that's how you can, you, know, you can tell them, hey, hold your hands up a million times. But if I do this drill with them, they can actually see the difference. Head, sorry. Well, I don't know how many times I've heard mom and daddy say, have the little kid running through the pen, and they're like, <laughs> Me too. pull him around, you know, and you're like, oh, no, 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 honey, lift, 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 because yeah. the, the, the reality is that the strength of your body is in the lift. If you're holding your hand down here by your side, mm -hmm. and you lift this way, you feel the muscle that you make every time that you move your body. Right. Okay? All right, when you get your hand further away from your body, you can feel this muscle right here from your wrist all the way to your elbow to your shoulder stretch out. Now, how, how many guys do you see bench press? You know, if they go out and they're going to lift a weight, they get mm -hmm. down, they pull it up, and then they push. They're not spread out here. They're going right. to lift that barbell up like this. They can't pick it up. Right. So that's they don't have enough strength. Exa exactly. Right uh -huh. Whether you're a man or a woman, right. it doesn't work. So what we're just trying to say is that, you know, finesse is what we want in technique. Right. At, always. Always. Okay. Always. And we, and we don't want to, we don't want to say that we need physical strength to pull a horse around a barrel. But in that aspect, it does take some amount of physical strength to stay with a hard running, hard running, you know, hard turning horse. Right. So what I'm going to show you is um, kind of my theory on it is with a feed sack. And this okay. is what I show them at the clinic. And uh, when I have a girl that is getting too scattered out on a horse and she's pulling around yeah. and she's on a hard running horse, I'll say, you know, get off, come here, I want to show you what the difference between your physical strength will be. So if you stand over here next to this feed sack. Okay, me. I'll yep. stand on this side. Right. All right, I can take this feed sack at this point. Mm -hmm. See, I can pick it up off the ground. Okay. Because my wrist is next to my body. My elbow is as close to my body as I can get it and pick the sack up. Okay. okay. You, now you try. Let me do this on the right yeah, hand. Yeah, right, right hand. You're a lot yeah. stronger that way. Okay, so like this. Yeah, now pick it up. See, now you can feel that muscle right here through right. your body and your shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's at work. Right. You have all that physical finesse to be able to do right. that. Right. Takes a okay. lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the theory that it, for every two inches that you pull your, your, your elbow away from your body, mm -hmm. you lose five pounds of pressure. Okay. Okay. So we're going to stand away from the sack. Like this? Yep. You get away from it, Charlotte. Now, and arms length. Oh, arms length, okay. Yep. Now, reach down. All right. And try to pick that sack up. <laughs> <laughs> no. You can't do no, it. No, I mean, just barely. Yeah. So, what that I'm saying is that when you get your body that far away from your rib cage, you get your elbows that far away from your rib cage, and you'll have your hands in proper position mm -hmm. down here where you can control and finesse or lift a horse to help keep his rib cage up. When you get out here, how do you expect to keep his rib cage up? How do you expect any flexation out of the horse at all? Right. You, you can't because you're scattered out yourself. You're not sitting square, your body's not square.